and uh, one of the great ironies is, and David, feel free to weigh in on this, but it seems to me they've been talking about the red green axis for a while in terms of the, and what we were also, what we're actually looking at is the elite, the globalist elitists believe, the, the Davos crowd, believe that when the, the one country that stands in the way of world governance is the United States, the strength of our sovereignty. They've done everything to try to break down the strength of our society from open borders to open, open borders from labor to open borders from t- free of tariffs. Those two things have effectively were effectively used to break down America's sovereignty. Now they're bold enough to say they've attacked our founders, saying there's not, we don't have any exceptionalism. The founders were evil. The heart of our country is evil. The Constitution and Declaration of Independence should be thrown out the window, even though they're the most remarkable documents in, in human history in terms of governance. They should be thrown out the window. And we should embrace something along the line of Plato's Republic, where the very smart people get to tell everybody else what to do because they believe they're the very smart people. The problem, yes. and, they, and they embrace China, and they want China to be the winner because China ultimately is a command and control co- economy, and they believe they can control China. The challenge yes. smart people have is they don't have any armies, and at the end of the day, you got if they've got a million Chinese attacking Geneva, they aren't going to live. But that's no. but they're not that smart. They don't recognize that smart people without armies are just dead smart people. So it's a, but that's the game they're playing, and they don't realize the only thing that protects them is America, is our strength standing up for intellectual capacity and, and intellectual freedom and the like, and they and, can't exist and, in a world that they envision. And our hands are tied as well. When you hear somebody like Tucker castigating America for having dropped the bombs in Japan, He's hardcore on that. He hardcore believes that America is evil and has no 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 room to apologize for having stopped what would have ultimately been the the wiping out of all of Japan. I well, mean, I mean that's why I would just if I were confronted by this with Tucker, I would ask him a question. And it would say, Why didn't Japan surrender after the first one? They because can't. We never had to drop a bomb on Nagasaki if Japan says, oh, man, we can't do this. So they but no, they didn't surrender. No, nope. they Japan's failure to surrender killed all those people in Nagasaki. They that doubled down. Included. They and, doubled oh, the down. Way, I would just invite him to, to just watch a simple movie. And, and I referred when I had some students in a class. 20 years ago, it was the movie D-Day, which had John Wayne and a bunch of other figures oh, yeah. of taking on and the American troops the going on. Day, the right? Is the yes. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah. That's and the, the American troops going on to the shores and just again, so many dying, so many drowning. The, the difficulties of actually taking land, which were a lot of the Pacific Rim movies after World War II really didn't show how horrific the loss was for little dot islands. D-Day really did. And then you go to well, Saving Private Ryan, which was more graphic because you had more sound. Yeah, but, but there's another one. I need to find it again, gentlemen. There's another one out there that specifically has to do with Japan and the Pacific. And it's very real and very gritty about what our soldiers faced in 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 fighting against right. Japan on one of those outlying islands. Right. I think it was actually Clint Eastwood's movie about something of our father. I yeah. I think that that was about Japan. A, it, it's it takes a country that is that loads planes with TNT and fly and has their men fly those planes into a ship to try to stop the oncoming onslaught will do anything and to try to fight door to door through the entire just the main island of Japan. it is it's called with, with flags what you family. need to do is, is Tucker needs to watch flags of our father and see the bloody conquest for Iwo Jima and what happened to our soldiers on that island repeatedly, and then he will understand what Japan was willing to do in order to never surrender at that time. 
I, I think there's also a generational thing. Tucker's younger than us. Those of us, Rick, Pastor, we grew up knowing people who fought World War II. We had neighbors. We had teachers in elementary school, high school, who fought in World War II. And we grew up on the movies about what they went through, on right. what they did. Before, there was, The Longest Day is one of those movies. The Clint Eastwood movie is much later, but the things of the Guns of Navarone, or some of it's fiction, but very much describes what they went through, and some is real. Tora, 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 we grew up in the 60s, or The, the Longest Day. I think our generation needs Hacks to rich. our education system. Yeah. and force them to study American history in World War II and understand there's a number of things about it. It wasn't a war of choice. We were attacked. Number two, it wasn't a war we all knew we were going to win. Frankly, Americans at the beginning of the war were not sure. It was... Right it, so. Yeah, we forget that if Britain had fallen, all the African colonies would have been Nazi the South America was already pretty much Nazi. That's why we had to create OSS, the precursor to the CIA, to try to stop those governments from siding with, the, with Franco and the Spanish government who was aligned with the Nazis. If Britain had fallen, Franco would have gone all the way, and so would the Spanish colonies. And we would have been fighting Nazis coming up through the Panama Canal, through the Caribbean, using British colonies, having the British fleet under their command. And on the other side, the Japanese were already working their way up through the Aleutian Islands heading into Alaska, as well as their Navy. We forget, Midway was the final battle before the attempt to take Hawaii. And just to put perspective on it, uh, when my mom was a kid, they had blackout curtains. She lived in Long Beach, yeah. California, a big naval base. And they had blackout curtains and they had you know, the spotlights that we all look at and they go in the air because they're advertising there's a car sale or something. Those yeah. were what you was used to, to see planes overhead. And they actually had one incident where there actually was a sighting, which, well, which is Long Beach, California. Okay. This isn't Hawaii. This is 2,000 miles into the ocean. This was our shore. You had a, and on the East Coast, you had German subs off the coast of New York. That was, you had, we know there were Germans who ended up landing because they had a malfunction of one of their subs and ended up landing it on America's shore. We had, so it was, it, we did not know we were going to win for a very simple reason. We were facing doing something we truly hadn't ever done before. We and World War One, we got in at the very end and we tipped the balance, but we never had to shoulder the complete burden of a war and this magnitude. And in World War Two, we did. And oh, by the way, for those of you who think that was fun, it's a those the same. My parents and others were busy saving rubber. They were busy saving it, not being able to do things, giving up staples. So they're not staples, but staples in terms of things you eat in order to support the war effort. Women went into the workplace and built planes and did a whole series of jobs on the assembly line so we could win the war based on our industrial capacity. We didn't win the war based on what we went into the war with. We won the war because we had an industrial capacity that expanded rapidly. And some say GM won the war, and they're not far from wrong when they say that. Ultimately, that and was- And Ford. Important. But it's imperative that our generation teach the younger ones, because when I see these kids on college campuses, if they see a little penny that's silver, they'll sit there and I think maybe that's a fake penny. Right. We grew up, we knew what those silver pennies were. They were steel pennies. And we right. knew why steel pennies. Because yes. copper was so valuable in the war effort that from 41, 42, 43, the government stamped steel pennies instead of copper pennies yep. because they needed to spare the copper. We knew it. We grew up with it and we collected them. We knew what it meant. We had the stories. We need to teach our young kids. This is what war really is. Israel right now is forging its own World War II generation. And it's let's be happen. clear. And let's be clear, folks, for those that will sit here and throw out things like neocon and all that other kind of 
let me be really clear. We don't want war. That's the whole point of this. We don't want this war. And there was a time when America would go into these kinds of situations with the mindset that we're going to end it quickly so that there is the least amount of loss of life, both on our side and on the side of those that we're having to go into war with, recognizing... At the deepest level, at the, deepest level the American value is we want to mind our own business. We want to be left alone. Yep. We want to be left alone. So when we go to war, we want to get it done so we can go home and mind our business again. Right. We want to win and win big. And that is done decisively, quickly, rapidly. And, and, and that way you buy yourself. There will always be another crazy who comes. There will never be world peace like that unless there's a, a fundamental religious event. But given man who he is right now, we are going to have more wars. But you buy yourself a lot of safety and a lot of years of calm if you decisively defeat evil when it rears its head. And then maybe a generation or two later, another will come by. But, but that's what the Israelis are being told by the Biden administration. From day one, it turns out that we told them not to go in on the ground. Now, you have one and a half thousand people slaughtered like that. Of course, you're going to go in the ground to try to get the hostages, let alone to get the people who did it. Yeah. But the second thing is, every single step of the way, mm -hmm. we have told the Israelis, slow down, be more careful if you want to maintain our support. And now all of a sudden we're saying, time's up. Stop. Yeah, yeah, they, slowed, they, yeah they ran the clock out is what they did. They ran the clock out. And this was and, apparently and, what they wanted to do all along. And guess what? Netanyahu's in the position where he has no choice but to finish the job politically in Israel. That's what he has to do politically. And it's the right thing for them to do. The irony of this is if we did our job, we would have gotten our quote unquote ally, Qatar, to to basically take the Hamas leadership and jail them yep. for international war crimes. <clears throat> yep. That would have been a that Absolutely. would have been the actual response that would have cut this war in half. Because once the fighters had their leaders arrested and cut off the, the there are off the head. Uh, and, those, and then the fighters aren't going to sit there and say, I'm not dying for this because the leaders would all be ratting them out and show them who they were. So they should have been because, we didn't, because we didn't pressure Cutter to to end the safe, the safety, the safe haven, they but given to Moss leadership. And, and we should have, because we didn't, this war continues. And it's just another example of Biden being more interested in trying to um, go back in time to when the Pal so-called Palestinians were the centerpiece of our Middle Eastern policy, rather than the reality of setting up a, a, a Southern alliance that were Western friendly, that would, Jewish and, and uh, Muslim, that would stand up against Iran, because ultimately the Biden administration is an Iranian proxy. That's right. And the region is seeing that. But I want to make one one point also about the anti-Semitism on the campuses and so forth is, again, this is elite driven. 